Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing the Poor Man's Gwent Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which we can only use bronze cards, giving us a really well-balanced event. Today we're trying the only faction we have yet to use in this event, so let's go take a look at the deck. So today we'll be playing a Syndicate Jackpot deck, because Syndicate is the only faction we've yet to use in this event, and the goal of this deck is to generate a bunch of coins, and then also get a lot of different gang categories on the board to set up several of our cards. So we'll want to start rounds with things like Tax Collector to generate a lot of coins early, and of course eventually, once we generate a lot of coins, Tax Collector will turn into a boosting engine, and we can put a Townsfolk on the board to benefit from all that coin generation. Then we have other engines with things like the Eternal Fire Disciple, and Sly Seductress, and as we start to get more units on the board, especially ones with multiple gang categories like Mutants Maker and Bloody Good Friends, then that sets us up for amazing value on Little Bird, which can absolutely carry you for a round, making this the star of the deck. It also sets up pulling the strings to help us steal one of our opponent's cards. Then at the end of the match, we'll use some of our spenders to spend all of our remaining coins, Street Urchins for boosts, Bloody Good Friends for bleed and damage, or Bloody Good Fun for damage. So there's a look at the deck, now let's go see it in action. Alright, so go up against Nilfgaard here, and we'll go first. Okay, so we could get started with some tax collectors, get some coin generation going, and then set up the thinning on the casino bouncers. That's at least long term, not a bad idea. In terms of actual round winning cards here, I mean the Eternal Fire Disciple is a solid engine for us, that's probably not enough in and of itself. Could use Street Urchins as a spender, potentially Salamander Mage as a finisher. I'm thinking, I mean, we could use Bloody Good Fun as a finisher, although I'm not sure we really want to do that in round one, when we could potentially benefit from having coin carryover. Double Beggar gives us some, some potential benefits. So why don't we at least begin with the Tax Collector, and let's use Tiger's Eye, just because we can get up to maximum coins more quickly. Okay, they're going to put... Spying on the Tax Collector, of course, no coup in a bronze-only event, but that may just be for damage long-term. So, at this point, let's probably get out the Disciple, because that is our next best engine. Alright, Thirsty Dame. Of course, they don't have access to a bunch of the status spam cards that would usually make this card completely busted, although I am still concerned about it. So, I mean, if they continue to play cards next to each other, that does help us with Salamander Mage, but we want to wait on that at least a little bit longer. Does also mean that the Vitality on Fence is maybe not the best idea when they have a Thirsty Dame on the board. They might be about to get another one, though. So Casino Bouncers, we would like to get the thinning from that at some point. That's not a real rush, but we could go that route now because don't really have any engines other than Fence if we were to just have this be Vitality. So, I, I guess we'll do this. Alright, and it is a lock on the Eternal Fire Disciple. We got a couple of turns out of it. I'm surprised they didn't immediately choose to answer it. I guess they wanted to get Thirsty Dame down before they used this. But we do have other potential engines. Once we do hit nine coins, we could start getting a point per turn from tax collectors. We could do that here. Otherwise, just don't want to get our beggars split between rounds. Otherwise, they lose a lot of their value. So maybe we use that here so that it's early enough that we can still sneak in the other one as well. And now we are at nine coins. Master Disguise is going to be one point per turn as well. So I'm thinking we drop the Beggar, and then that might be all we do. We'll see. So that is pretty solid tempo. Alright, they do... Ooh. Okay, Alba Pikeman is probably the best card, to combine with Thirsty Dame, of course. The Salamander Mage can hit it. It is on Tribute 5, which is useful, but it's not going to be enough in and of itself to take out the Alba Pikeman. So I'm thinking we might just have to live with this and pass now unless we drop a Task Collector as well. And that way we're getting two points per turn, but this is going to be a lot of points per turn when you combine that with the Thirsty Dame. So I think we draw the line here. They might be able to catch us in one turn. It's going to be pretty close once you add in... Yeah, I imagine the card from their hand, the damage from the turncoat, they can probably do it. 
Combat Engineer. That does have some carryover value, which is a little bit concerning. Once they do the bleed, and we take the damage from the bleed, are we going to be tied once you factor in this boost? Oh, but then the Master Disguise as well. So yeah, they'll win round one. Okay, but they did play one more card than us, so they might just drive past here. If they do, then the ideal play for us would probably be to go with coin generation, along with, you know, obviously putting at least some points on the board. I don't think bloody good fun or pulling the strings makes a lot of sense in a short round, at least. Not gonna have time for Pearl Diver, though. If they try to push, then that does become an option for us. Maybe we settle for this and Mutant's Maker might be our throwaway. Because they do drive past. Okay. So yeah, let's at least get some additional coins. And I think, you know, it's either Street Urchins or Mutants Maker, and since Street Urchins is also a spender, I think that's probably more valuable for us to save. So we'll use you. That way we get still some coins carrying over into round three. All right, and I think our primary win condition in this round may end up being the little bird, since if we can get a lot of gangs on the board, that can be extremely valuable, along with pulling the strings. So we want to make sure we have things like Bloody Good Friends, two gangs in one card, which is fantastic. Salamandra can oftentimes be a difficult category to get, so Salamandra Mage in hand is good. Fire Sworn, we account for that. Townsfolk does not have a category. I think we have just about everything here. We do still have several cards that don't have any categories in hand. Could potentially get our other little bird, though, as well. So maybe we dump you. And second Bloody Good Friends, I think is not that meaningful when we already have one in hand. So as for what we want to go with first here, it's probably still going to be Tax Collector. Get the coins generated as quickly as possible. And maybe Townsfolk as well. That does mean that we're going to have to wait a while before we start setting up the little bird for good value. And I did kind of expect the first few cards that we played to get locked. And I think it's important that that not be little bird. I was kind of fishing to get our second little bird out from our deck. But uh, we did not end up getting that. So we could still go Townsfolk. I mean, maybe this gets locked. But we still have some coin earning potential for sure. So it's not a terrible idea. Also, we'd like to get Eternal Fire Disciple down there. But you do have a, a category for the gangs, so we want to be a little more protective of you. So let's go Townsfolk. Let's at least see if it gets answered. Okay, it's another Alba Pikeman. Now, if that... If we could steal that, that would be great, because I'm imagining, given what we saw in round one, that they're going to try to pull off another Thirsty Dame plus Alba Pikeman combo. And we can't do much to outright destroy it at this stage. This is where having bloody good fun would have been useful. But I think now we probably go Eternal Fire Disciple. And this way we have a couple cards with the Fire Sworn tag. So even if this gets answered, we at least have this little zealot who's still doing some work for us. All right, Slave Driver for more of the... Oh, what? I assumed that was going to be for more of the pikemen. I don't know why they did that. All right, if you insist. Could be time for Little Bird. It's a little early to get good value from it, but it's still possible. I'm wondering if they're going to do like a teleportation to replay this, because otherwise I don't know why they would create an extra copy of it. It's not worth a lot of value. Just eyeing what other categories we might infuse on our Little Bird. Otherwise, we go Bloody Good Friends, which at least has a lot of tags, and that way, if we do play little bird on our next turn we can get solid value at that stage maybe that's what we go for so this is largely for little bird setup and also pulling the strings okay there's the thirsty game we expected to see now if we could steal that that'd be great i just wasn't really expecting us to have the range to do that so you're up at six which would mean we basically need to have all of the categories and we have one two three right now so we are not there yet and this infusion is going to give her a, a boost, right? So I think we probably just have to live with that at this stage. Fire Sworn, Salamander. Uh, we do have Fire Sworn, but Salamander is a tag. We don't yet have. So there's something to be said for getting you down, but I think we try to get in Little Bird now. And Tide Cloaks we have with Fence. We'd like to get that pretty soon. I think it's going to be Blind Eyes here. Street Urchins might end up being our last play, in which case gonna be a while until we see that tag show up so let's do this could actually get solid value from bloody good friends as well but let's do that 
All right, well, they're going for the Eternal Fire Disciple. I mean, I guess that's more valuable to them than Little Bird would be. Slave Driver for... Okay, this is what I expected them to do. Though, I think we have an interesting play here. Because I was originally going to go pulling the strings, steal this Alba Pikeman, which is pretty valuable. Although, we also have the option of going Salamandra Mage, which would require that we use Leader Ability here. That's probably not a terrible thing, though. If we do this, we can destroy you... Drop you down to one, then we could put a bleed on you, which would take you out by the end of the next turn. That might be good enough for us. Okay, let's do it. And in that case, let's boost probably the little bird, especially since she can't boost herself. And we do this. And we're gonna tribute. Okay. Do that. Put one bleed on you. And then probably boost. I guess you. Now that's five points for just two coins, which is pretty sweet. All right, Fire Scorpion, they did set that up slightly in the previous round with the Engineer, right? So we, I believe, should have enough gangs now that we could steal that. And that might be the most valuable card for us to steal, because we have what? Fire Sworn, Crown Splitters, Cut Ups... Blind Eyes, that's four. Salamander is five. So we actually have overkill seizing in that case, but I think we take you nonetheless. So I'm not sure we're going to get a better opportunity to do this. And then we'll still... I mean, we might even boost you. not really sure who our best alternative would be. So sure, do that. And then we could spend coins using Bloody Good Friends, but I think we just wait until our last turn because this has tempo, whereas this is just with a cooldown, and it is more value per coin than this is. It's another Fire Scorpion. Now, this one we will not be able to steal, for what it's worth. We do have a couple of charges. Not that that's really enough for us to do anything. I mean, a couple of bleeds from Bloody Good Friends would take you out very slowly, but at that point, that's not really going to make a difference. So I think now we probably go Mutants Maker, get ourselves some more coins, or we go Fence, which... Admittedly, we don't have a lot of coins to work with there, so I think Fence might end up being our finisher at this point. So it's, well, either way, it's not going to be worth very much. So I don't think we're really optimizing around that. We do this. We get, although for what it's worth, it was, I think, the one tag that we do not yet control. So, all right, maybe that was the case to be made for it. We'll boost. They theoretically could have Red Haze, so let's not boost things that are right next to each other. He says as he boosts things that are right next to each other. Alright, Duchess's Informants, what are they going to steal? Maybe another Fire Scorpion? No? General Fire Disciple? Okay. We could fence. It does technically mean a little bit more value on Little Bird, because I'm pretty sure Tide Cloaks is the only category we don't yet have. The Vitality is not going to be a huge deal. I mean, we could tribute to boost ourselves by our coin count. Not that that's going to do anything, because at that point we have no coins. And that means no way to get the value from Little Bird. So I think we... Maybe we do go fence... No tribute, it does mean we're going to give a status to Thirsty, or to boost up Thirsty Dame, but I think we live with that. It's not a huge deal. Put you here, in this pocket. That way, we don't have big cards next to each other in case they have Red Haze. We use Little Bird, and on this occasion, uh, still not really a great target for us. Uh, it's not like they have Vanamar, so I guess we could boost this Eternal Fire Disciple. I think that's still okay. No, they might Igni us. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Master of Puppets. Okay, so that's a reason not to go all in on boosting one specific unit. That might have been the single most threatening card they could have played. In fact, I'm almost certain that it is. Fortunately, we did spread out our boosts a reasonable bit, although stealing an 11-point card is still a pretty big deal. So we'll go Street Urchins here, and we're going to have to be mindful of how best to use these coins, because yes, Little Bird boosting something is the best way to get points on our side, but as long as we boost something small, that's probably still okay. So if we make something bigger than 11, then obviously that becomes a prime Master Puppets target. So let's now, I think, just use our remaining coins either to boost you, or we could go Bloody Good Friends, hit Thirsty Dame. And technically, we could go even further than that if we really wanted to. It's actually not a terrible idea. I mean, they're just going to steal this Eternal Fire Disciple in that case, but...
I guess now they have one slightly less good stealing target. Renfri's gang, assuming they have the other one. I still don't think it's enough, but this is a big point swing. But we'll still hold on for the win. All right, so going up against Skellige here, and they'll go first. So if we had to guess based on leader ability and based on their stratagem, you have to imagine they're trying to stack a bunch of armor and potentially getting a whole bunch of boosts in the process. So having something like Bloody Good Friends to reduce those boosts could be useful. Otherwise, ways to avoid having our cards become damaged in the first place could be useful to limit their armor. So Little Bird, of course, can be one of our key cards for that. Otherwise, Eternal Fire Disciple is a good engine for us. In terms of coin generation, though, we have Mutants Maker. Pearl Diver, though it's slow, would love to see Tax Collector here, if we could find one. I think pulling the strings, having two of them in the same round, maybe not the best option. Okay, this is a little more well-rounded now that we have a Tax Collector. Okay, Raging Bear, solid turn one play, no downside, just eight point slam. So I'm thinking we go Tax Collector. This is a fairly easy target for them to damage, if not outright destroy on this turn, though. So we'll see how long this lasts. Okay, long ship. That was the recipient of their stratagem, so it's boosted, it has more armor. But in some ways, I'm glad they're playing that round one of the wise. They could have loaded up on a ton of armor in hand on one of their units, and that could have become an issue later on. So at least there's no carryover from that. I think we might go townsfolk here. I mean, anything is going to become damaged from that long ship, so that's unavoidable. We're going to get them some armor there, but at least you get boosted back up. Granted, that means if they damage it again, they can farm it every turn for more armor. Hopefully that doesn't end up happening, but we'll see. Okay, well, that is exactly what's about to happen. They can hit each unit. So my fears are very quickly becoming reality here. Eternal Fire Disciple would be our next best engine. This is a very solid engine at that. It is, of course, another card that will be damaged by the longship and very easily removable once that happens, although it does boost up townsfolk in the process. Give it a shot. Here comes the leader ability for more damaged cards. Feral bonds. More damaged cards. So the armor in their hands, we have to imagine, is very quickly adding up here. This, of course, is not coming directly from their hand, and it's not a pirate anyway, so that will not get armor. But should we press any further here, or have we seen enough? It would be nice to get knitting from Casino Bouncers, but this will, of course, just add to the cards that get damaged and add to the amount of armor they receive in hand. And maybe once we get to the next round, they won't have any long ships left, and so we can avoid that. But there's always a chance that their second long ship will be their first play in round two, and then there's no reason at that point for us not to push further in this round, because at that point, we wouldn't really be avoiding the issue, even if we passed early in round one. All right, but they'll pass here. That means they will get that extra value as this turns into a bear abomination, but we have a couple turns to catch them, and we have enough engines on the board that I think that is possible between Townsfolk, Tax Collector, Eternal Fire Disciple. Yes, they will continue to damage us with the longship, and that means they will continue to get armor in their hand, which I still don't love. Let's just see where this puts us, points-wise. Let's do this. You will drop down to a 1, which is a little nerve-wracking. Uh, we could do... ...that. And now we'll win, with a card to spare. Okay, so we do technically have one throwaway card here, which means we could just use something that generates coins and then pass after that, so we at least have a little bit more value carrying over into round three. We have one beggar here. If we can get both beggars, that's solid value. Just one, though, and they're a little bit questionable. Mutants Maker is probably our best way to generate some quick coins in that case, unless we just go for uh, pulling the strings, although that's a strong enough card. We might want to save that for round three. We might play one of you. You are, however, really good to combine with the little bird, so for that reason, I want to make sure we save at least one of you. Let's try Mulgling the beggar and task letter. I mean, that might be a good round three starter. So sure, we'll use Mutants Maker. Our plan here, at least what we anticipate, is that that's going to be the only thing that we play in this round. All right, Highland Warlord, that is some carrier value for them. 
We are tied at four points apiece. We could pass here, and then they'd be forced to play another card. They have another throwaway, so that's not a huge deal, but that might still be what we go for, since that was kind of our plan all along. Unless, I don't know, we want to drop a Pearl Diver. I guess we could have done that in the previous turn, and just say, all right, if you don't answer this, we're getting even more carryover. That is still possible, although at this point, that would take long enough. That's probably not worth doing, so I think we do still pass here. And it's... Okay, Blacksmith. All they needed was a throw away, and so they'll win round two. Okay, so we draw to one beggar. Not a huge fan of one beggar. Really would like to see both of them. Turtle Fire Disciple, though, that is a really good engine for us. And Salamander Mage can be a decent late-ish round play. The Tax Collector could be a turn one play. The two Blood Good Friends is a little bit overkill because the double gang tag is fantastic, but they're kind of redundant to have both of them in hand. Tide Cloaks, I'd like to have at least one in our deck so we can get the infusion on Little Bird. If we could get a second Little Bird, that'd be even better still. But it's the second beggar. Okay, so that's not terrible. That way we're getting decent beggar value, assuming that these guys live. Okay, Drakkar, some self damage. It's okay, we won't make a point of hitting that. Let's go Tax Collector first. Okay, Corsair, this is the combo they're looking for. Point scoring combo, sure, but I think our point scoring potential is pretty high here with Little Bird, as long as Little Bird survives long enough for us to get that value. So I'm not too concerned about that. I'm more concerned about if they go for damage or if they pull off some ridiculous armor-based boosting combos. I mean, this is an armor-based boosting combo, but based on the carryover armor that they've already generated. Let's go with the Eternal Fire Disciple, because that is a really powerful engine for us, and the earlier we get it down, the better it is. Okay, Smuggler, so now they do have damage. Um, that was not the correct place to play that card. So they did miss out on some damage, fortunately for us. So we would like to get the Pearl Diver down. She is a little bit vulnerable, so it takes several turns before we get the coins from her. I think we might still need to play her on this turn, though. I mean, you could delay a little bit and maybe... Ah, uh, we could use Jackpot on her if we're really concerned about her surviving, but I think we do this. I think we try to sneak her in now, and at this point we have enough engines on the board that I think it's a little bit tricky for them to find a good card to go after. Also, another reason why we're not too concerned about the boost is because we do have a lot of good friends, which can help answer some of those boosting cards. Okay, Cultist. Has to be going melee row, right? Okay, so at this point, we have Fire Sworn, we have Tide Cloaks. If we were to play Little Bird, we could infuse her with what might be most valuable. Maybe Salamander, just because that's going to be something we get relatively late. Oh, Mutant's Maker could be coming pretty soon. Don't really want to go either Crown Splitters or Cut-Ups, because we're going to get two for one when we play Bloody Good Friends. But it might be Little Bird now, just so we get a lot of time with this on the board. So let's go for it. I don't think it's Blind Eyes. I think it's... Oh, but we already have Tech Books. Well, I guess it is Blind Eyes. Let's boost you. So that way you're a little bit harder for them to remove, and... A little bit less Bloodthirst makes it less likely for that Armored Drakkar to get value, especially because they're about to get some damaged cards in this row soon. Okay, so there's the rain. Now they theoretically want to play something on this side of the Cultist. Okay, this is what I was worried about. Cards like Boat Builders with ridiculous armor. And then boosting cards based on how much armor they had. So this does make me nervous. Fortunately, they played one of those big armor cards, but presumably they still have one or two in hand with a bunch of armor as well. I think now that we have Little Bird on the board, we should break out Bloody Good Friends because this is just a way that makes Little Bird so much stronger, so much more quickly. So we'll throw you down. Let's use Little Bird. We are about to get coins from Pearl Diver. I think we're probably still... We could boost Pearl Diver nonetheless, in part just to make it so that we have less stuff that is damaged. Granted, with all the Fire Sworn Zealots we're going to be creating in that row, that's going to be still pretty easy for them to damage cards in that row. Going to try to wait on the Bloody Good Friends, because this can be our finishing way to just spend whatever coins we have left at the end of the match. This is our best tempo as a spender right now. Granted, playing it this early is a little bit risky for that reason, because they could answer it. And that might be exactly what they're going for here. Oh, and Abordage has the extra damage. Wait, hold on. What are they playing with it? Ah, uh, this is two damage. 15 armor. 
Okay, honestly, I think we can live with that. We still have Firesworn tags coming from these Zealots, and we will get another Firesworn tag from the Mutants Maker. I was probably more concerned about them shutting down Bloody Good Friends, because we do still have a big coin spending engine here that we want to use every turn. Okay, so it could be both Beggars, it could be Mutants Maker. Uh, did we lose any tags there? We still have Firesworn, Tide Cloaks, Blind Eyes, Crown Splitter's cut up, so I think we're good there. Uh, Salamandra is the thing we're missing here. So much armor that it's going to be hard to get value from Salamandra Mage, so we might be looking at Mutants Maker here. Which does over-profit, but that's okay, because we have Jackpot. And let's boost you up, because I am concerned about losing you, especially when you have two tags and one unit. Okay, Funeral Boat. It's a little bit late to be playing that, but okay. We'd love to see them have a highly boosted unit that does not have a bunch of armor, and that can be what we go after with Blood Good Friends on our last turn, although we could also, at this point, certainly look to steal something. Although, it might be a little too little too late for that. We do have all six tags, so we could steal up to a six power unit, Boat Builders being the closest thing to that, but that's... I mean, it is giving them armor, but I'm not really sure that that's humongous engine for us to answer so i think we're just going beggars in that case for the time being this will once again over profit maybe for that reason deny the bloodthirst go for this although we would very much like for this beggar to survive so we can get the value from this bonded beggar okay so we do not have zeal because we denied the bloodthirst. We could steal you. That way, we get the three-point body. We get the damage charges as well. I think that's probably as good as it's going to get for pulling the strings at this stage. So let's boost you for the time being. So you're out of removal range. We're going to spend, I guess, to hit the... Well, actually, bleed might be better at this point, to be honest with you. Although, in fact, if Bloody Good Friends is going to be our finisher, that is not... Well, this is why it was so valuable for us to load up on, or at least prevent them from getting a lot of damaged units, so that things like the Twirsock Axeman was not going to get any value. And for that reason, they'll forfeit, we'll take the win. So there's a look at a Syndicate deck for the new Poor Man's Gwent Seasonal Event. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions we should experiment with next. And take a look at our Poor Man's Gwent playlist to see previous decks that we've used in this event as well. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.